So today's guest is Suzanne Morais, who left a career in higher education to pursue something that she now says feeds her soul. Suzanne worked at Clemson, Penn State, NC State University, and now owns her own hypnosis business. That's right. I said hypnosis. She is a certified hypnotherapist who believes that it has transformative powers in people's lives and is often misunderstood because of its portrayals in Hollywood. Suzanne, welcome to the program. Thank you so much for having me. Well, I am so excited to dig into this topic because I have I've never met anybody who does this, so I think it's really fascinating. But first, let's back up a little bit and talk about how you got here. Let's talk about your education and kind of your career path. Absolutely. Um, yeah. So let's see. I, um, you know, grew up in Florida and um, went off to college at the College of Charleston in South Carolina, where I studied psychology. So I always had an interest in psychology and the human mind, but I just didn't quite know what to do with it. It took me a little while to figure that out. Um, following college, I had a dream to go um, travel and explore Colorado, and um, I just didn't quite know what I wanted to be. And, um, and so I went out there, I got a great job. I was a trip leader, um, leading trips, uh, outdoor recreation type trips all across the Western United States. And, you know, I was able to pursue that dream of being able to travel and do more and, um, and then landed in Colorado for a while and um, eventually went to grad school and I pursued a degree in outdoor recreation and leadership, which led me into academia and higher education. So, um, once I graduated, I became a program director at Clemson University, and they hired me as a teaching assistant professor. Um, loved being there. That was really fun. And then I met my husband, um, who was finishing his, his PhD, and we went to Penn State University. Um, and at Penn State, I ran a program for 10 years. I taught for 10 years. I, I really loved the work that I did there. But we didn't love the weather, Pennsylvania. Mm, oh, I'm okay. from there. I can tell you I understand uh, that completely. Yeah, we were in Happy Valley, which is not super happy if you have seasonal affective disorder, <laughs> which, mm -hmm. which I did as a Florida girl. Um, and so I, we moved here to North Carolina State University. And I taught uh, at NC State for a, a long time and just didn't find that it was feeding my soul anymore. Um, I really enjoyed the students and I love being in the classroom, but it was all the other stuff that just didn't quite feel consistent for me. What and were you so, teaching in all of these different universities? Yeah, great question. Um, a lot of, uh, so I was in the parks, recreation, tourism management and all those universities or, or version of that. Mm -hmm. And I was teaching recreational programming. I was teaching leadership. Um, you know, a variety of things. I was actually teaching an internship class. So, you know, a lot of professional skills and leadership type of things. So, you know, how does hypnosis fall into all this and how in the world did I get here? It, it still baffles me, honestly. <laughs> I could not have told you uh, that this was where I would have landed, but gosh, I'm so happy that I am here. Um, it was during the pandemic, early in the pandemic, my daughter and I were on a road trip and, you know, as we do, just kind of talking about things. And she said, do you believe in past lives? And I said, I, th I think so. I, I don't really know much about it. Let's listen to a podcast. And um, uh, at the time, there it, it was a, a podcast called The Past Lives Podcast. It's now called Our Paranormal Afterlives, but it's by Simon Brown. It was great. You know, we listened to one. She was satisfied, but I was fascinating. Like, I want to know more. I want to know more. And I binged on those for a while. And then I thought, well, I'm going to treat myself to a hypnosis session. I want to try one of these things. This sounds really interesting. And, and it was. And it wasn't even so much the, the session itself that was interesting. It was more of this feeling like that's what I'm supposed to be doing. It was the strangest thing. I just knew it. And in fact, when I was on the consultation with that hypnotist, I heard myself, the words just came out of my mouth. I want to do what you're doing. And I thought, where did that come from? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I mean, because it's very, I mean, it's very unique. It's very niche. It's not something that a lot of people do or that, yeah. like I said, I've never actually met somebody that did it. Well, I can't wait to tell you about it because it is so incredible. And, you know, with things that are going on in mental health right now, um, 
you know, this is a fantastic way to really make change in a really different way um, than, you know, what people are typically pursuing. Um, and I can go more into that later. But yeah, so essentially I ended up, you know, while still working at NC State, decided to get certified um, in, you know, with hypnosis. And that took about six months. And um, I just said, OK, I'm going to work part time. And everything just kind of kept falling into place. You know, you know, when you're doing things you're supposed to be doing, it's a whole lot easier. It's like you're not pushing up right. it and it's just kind of all coming together. And so I had a number of clients and I was seeing them at night and I found that I just couldn't wait to leave work at NC State and go work, you know, in my private practice. And, you know, that I've never had that kind of excitement for work before. And I would come home just jazz, like, oh my gosh, this is the most amazing work. And um, probably about six months into that, I thought, I think I can do this. I think I can step you away. You can make a living. Yeah. So yeah. when I think of what you're doing, the only information I have about it is, you know, what I've seen in TV and movies, right? Uh. So you <laughs> see, um, you know, maybe using it in, to help solve a crime. So that's something that, you know, you've heard, uh, you see it on like the, the TV shows. Um, you know, you've also heard about it when it comes to trauma, people not remembering trauma, could they possibly remember more details and would that help them? And then I've heard of it, you know, people who are smokers or have some other kind of addiction that they're trying to break. And I've heard hypnosis can be used in that. So dispel all of the myths <laughs> and tell us how you use hypnosis and, and what it looks like. It's so amazing. It's so amazing. You really can come and work with hypnosis with just about anything. I don't do forensics hypnosis, so that's what you see in the movies. I do not own a pocket watch. Um, and the, the way that I work is, well, we kind of, let's start with like what it's good for. Yeah. You name it. But the, probably the most common thing I see is feelings of worthiness, uh, confidence, purpose, perfectionism, people-pleasing, imposter syndrome, um, fear of flying, uh, other very unusual fears, you name it. <laughs> I, I, I probably has seen, have seen it. And um, I do work with smoking. What's astounding about smoking is um, that, you know, smokers can come in having smoked for 30 years, a pack a day. And I, I sell a three-session package uh, I would say 90% of them are clear and done after one session. Um, you Amazing. Know, the second session is even better. And to to date, I have not yet had anybody come back for the third session because it's already done. Isn't that incredible? That is. So, I mean, you put somebody under hypnosis. Nope. Let's stop there. So, okay. Oh, good. I'm wrong. Yeah, <laughs> I really struggle with that word under. Okay. It's really scary for people. It right? is. Like, yeah. Oh, I'm going to go to sleep and somebody's going to control my mind. It's actually so much simpler than that. And the best example I can give is like when you're watching a movie, you know, uh, you're watching a screen and your mind, uh, your thinking analytical mind is quiet, mm -hmm. right? You know, we do that. Let's go Netflix and chill, right? So I can quiet my mind. Um, and then you're watching a movie and maybe there's a sad scene and you cry, right? Or there's a scary scene and you wince. Those are subconscious reactions. So you're actually in a state of hypnosis when you're watching a movie, even though you're awake, right? You're in a state of hypnosis. What a state of hypnosis is, is really bypassing the analytical mind, that critical, busy mind that drives us all crazy and kind of getting into the subconscious, the deeper part of you where really it's your body's hard drive. It's, it's got all the information you really need for healing, for change, where all the behaviors, all the patterns kind of got programmed in, you're able to access and work with that. It's truly amazing and so simple. So that whole idea of going under, if you if you consider when you watch a movie going under, then okay, that's the right term. But if you consider it like, I'm going to go kind of focus on something so that my brain's not so busy, that's really what I think of hypnosis as. And so um, though, you know, when, when you work with me, whether it be in my office or I also work online with clients all around the world, um, clients just close their eyes and I, I start by guiding them into a state of relaxation and that's just meant to quiet the, you know, calm the body really. Um, I have no expectation that analytical mind is going to turn off completely. In fact, that's probably the number one question I get from people is my mind is so busy. Can I do this? I don't think I can do this. Yeah, Everybody I'm right there. <laughs> Everybody says that. 
And I'm like, you can, you, if you can watch a movie and be, you know, fairly focused, focused, you're fine. Yeah. It's almost, it sounds almost like a meditative state. It's a lot like a meditative state, but easier. Okay. Cause most people struggle with meditation too, right? Mm -hmm. You can keep your mind quiet for five minutes or maybe not, not even that. So the way you bypass the critical factor in your mind is you use your imagination. And so what I do, because I'm really good at what I do, I can keep you focused inward. Um, So sort of focusing on um, using your imagination to begin with. And then, Mm -hmm. you know, for some people, they're not always visual, but sometimes it's just a feeling or a sensation or a knowing. And then we're in, right? And then the subconscious now, it's almost like you're just kind of speaking the first words that come off your, out of, off your tongue, you know, uh, the events that are suddenly popping into your head, you know, are kind of coming. And I always like to go to root cause. Um, that's the way that I work is let's go back to the, when this, this emotion got stuck or this behavior got patterned in and your subconscious doesn't know the difference between real and imagined. And it doesn't know time. Just like when you're watching a movie, right? You flinch because, uh, it thinks it's real. And so what you're able to do is provide care for your younger self in a way that, you know, an adult maybe didn't at the time when you needed it. So you can really work with your inner child. You can coach them not to smoke that first cigarette. You can um, look them in the eye and see how amazing they are and truly see them maybe in a way that an adult didn't. To how, long, how long does it typically last a person in hypnosis? Yeah, every session that I facilitate um, is an hour and a half, but we're they're generally, you know, kind of with their eyes closed and focused for about an hour. I gotcha. And then do they remember it? Of course. Yeah. I mean, it, it is um, sometimes it just it's very conversational. So we're talking the whole entire time. And some people say, well, that just felt like a conversation with my eyes closed. And um, other people say, oh, I really went kind of deep, you know, and just like when you're watching a movie, right? You'll remember things that people were talking to you. Um, you'll and you're awake, alert, alert, awake, and aware. You can kind of get up, and it's just like that with hypnosis. So I'm actually not doing anything except keeping you on track. Uh, the client themselves is facilitating the session. They are uh, just kind of sharing with me what's coming up, and then I'm saying, "Oh, okay, that's happening. Why don't you try this?" So I do not actually put anything in anybody's minds. It's more about them reprogramming themselves. So what about past trauma? People who maybe have blacked some, blocked something mm-hmm. and they, they want to remember it because they feel like that's important to healing. Yeah, absolutely. Um, with trauma, I always tell people you need to be seeing a psychotherapist. Um, and if you're in the care of a psychotherapist and that psychotherapist feels that it's okay for you to come get hypnosis, great. So I do need that kind of permission for trauma. Now, I will say that if there are blocked memories, you're not going to get them. Um, and in fact, I, I say that in my, in my advertising. When a memory is blocked, it's blocked for a reason. And that is your beautiful subconscious protection trying to keep that that memory safe because it knows it's going to be hard for you. And so it's blocking it to keep you alive, safe and well. And so even if you tried to access that in hypnosis, you're not going to get there. So how long have you been doing this now? Uh, Almost three years. Okay. So you really have transformed Um, your life and your career. And so many women who are over a certain age find it really hard to do that. They find it really hard to, to get to yeah. the next chapter. They feel maybe unseen or irrelevant. What advice would you give to women who are in that situation and are looking for that next chapter? Oh, that's a great question. And, you know, when I look back at myself, if I were to say to myself, you know, past self 10 years ago that I would have made this change, I wouldn't have believed it because I was such a I need to be safe, right? My job has prestige. I have benefits. I have a great schedule. It's not that bad, <laughs> right? And looking back, I'm like, I, I, I don't think I could have lived like that. I don't. I, I'm really glad I didn't um, live like that any longer than I had to because I, as soon as I made that really daring choice to step away, um, everything was better, and I have transformed as a human. I am. A completely different person and I've never been happier. And so, you know, the exam, the, the advice that I have for anybody who's sort of exploring what's next is, you know, one, just examine your values, 
you know, what is really important to you? And are you in alignment with those values doing the work that you're doing? And if not, just kind of reflect on what lights you up, you know, what makes you happy on any given day? Is it being outside? Is it helping people? Um, I always find that service generally lights people up in some way, you know, and what lights you up? Maybe you're creative, maybe you're a singer. Um, and then consider taking small steps, even if it's just small steps, stay in the safety of your position until you know that you are close to being able to financially, you know, step away from it. And then I, I promise you, <laughs> I wish I could like um, a promise, but I, I feel really strongly that once you're ready and you've positioned yourself, you can step into something new and it's going to be okay. Because once you're doing what you love and there's a passion, there's no stopping for it, no stopping you. You will, you will not fail. You will only succeed when you're doing what you love and the work that you're doing somehow or another benefits others. That's my thought about it. So I love the thought of meeting you at a party and asking you what you do. And then you <laughs> tell somebody, how do people react to that? Just exactly the way you did. Oh, I've never met anybody who does that. Right, right. Slightly judgy, I think. Slightly yeah, judgy. Oh, absolutely. Because again, <laughs> our information is coming from entertainment, not from real right. life experience. Right. And if I, if I could just tell the world, thank you for giving me voice to this. Hypnosis isn't, um, it, I mean, there's science behind this, right? Mm -hmm. there, there's neuroscience behind this. Uh, without chemicals, right? There's no need for chemicals. You know, I, I I will always say that psychotherapy is super important for you. Go reflect, learn about yourself, and then in combination, try hypnosis because you can clear those lifelong issues that just really feel stuck, like in one session, honestly, one to two sessions. Can you imagine? Um, you know, you can clear those feelings of worthiness. You can step into confidence. Uh, you can move beyond fear of financial restraints. You know, you can um, stop smoking. <laughs> you know, right. like I, I worked with somebody who pulled their eyelashes, you know, was pulling them out habitually. She thought it was a pattern that was never going to stop. And, um, and we nicked that in one session. So it's, you know, a powerful way, profound way to make change so healthy, so holistic you're doing it. I'm not programming. I'm, you know, I'm just asking questions and keeping you engaged. And even the busiest of minds can do it. So when you realize that, isn't it profound? Isn't it? Oh, it sounds fascinating. I'm already like my wheels are spinning. Like what, what do I need to be hypnotized yeah. about? I need, yeah. <laughs> I need to figure that out. And that's you know, what people, you know, when they come see me, they're like, oh, that worked. Okay. Let's keep chipping away the barnacles, right? Sure. Because I'm sure everybody could find something. Well, what, how can people follow you? Where can they find you? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, so journeyshypnosis.com is where you can find me. Um, like I said, I have an office in downtown Raleigh, but I also work online. So some people prefer to be in person. Some people like to work online. Um, I have a YouTube channel um, where I've got a lot of mind body videos and more information so you can learn how I work with hypnosis. Um, I have an Instagram page and a social a, a Facebook page all called Journeys Hypnosis. Great. And I will put that all in the show notes. So anything on your bucket list that you still want to do? <laughs> you can't stop me. I'm getting ready to, to um, present at a national conference. I would really like to write a book. Um, I work with groups now. So starting to be invited to um, corporate events, small group organization, even friend groups, groups of athletes, schools, right? Kind of teaching people mind body exercises to help them clear feelings of anxiety. You know, everybody could use that, right? Like here you are and the like your mind is spinning and, you know, a couple of little ac exercises can help you interrupt those processes. So um, I am just excited about um, helping everybody that I can reach uh, get to a better place so that they can live a, a more purposeful, happy life. Thank you so much. That was awesome. I really enjoyed learning about this and thank you for spending time with me today. I am so glad that you invited me. Thank you for this opportunity.